Okay, I'm back. Let's see how my scan is doing. It's still going through. And another thing you'll notice for just people that are using Windows 7, if you try to take your, uh, go click on, you know, your C drive, the C drive is here where it says Windows. So you'll have a folder called Users, and then your username, I have to know Jack's, Jack is my boss, and then you have App Data, Local, and Microsoft. If you go in there and you go there any deeper than just, um, uh, Microsoft, it won't actually reveal the fact that you have some of these directories that have temp on it and uh, temporary internet files, and so you can't really clean them out. You don't even know they're there, and it kind of, I think, kind of helps the bad guys. Uh, and even if you go into Internet Explorer and you say clear up my history, which is the setting that I have, those files will still be there. Let's see what he's talking about now. Jack site in the search result. Click on the link. But instead of going to the spam content, it will actually be redirected to um, to a malware. Uh, there could be more than one redirection. Uh, it's a simplified version. You get the, you get the idea. Uh, there's usually a command control okay. server involved, which um, tells the uh, agile site how what keyword yeah. they should uh, create. Page Com on. Command and control server. Okay, so now let's go listen to what this guy has to say from Santa Barbara. While um, I'm doing my virus scan. Um, I'm just saying botnet. I know it's going to be the first for you. Yeah, here it is. Okay, I'll just let him talk for a little bit in the background while I mumble incoherently. And I can't think of it. You know, as I do things, I think of how I could. <laughs> Basically, I'm making these presentations as I decide I'm going to do this or that to my to my systems. And the reason why I've installed the antivirus in here is because I did did have that one morning that came up, and I decided that I'm going to check it out. And so, I'm still a little worried about maybe um, if, in fact, these. Uh, I mean, not, I I really doubt that these. Um, this desk is compromised, but it's it's remotely possible. And I've run a virus scan on my uh, also on my own uh, Linux directory for this program. And you know, hopefully, it hasn't. You know, the, the only thing that would make it not work is if there's a process running in the background that allows that, that would disable the scanner from working. But there's a way to tell what's running. But often, when uh, your when your uh, when your desktop is, has been rooted, of course, the, the the command for ps has been altered, and so the processes that are being used by the bad guy in the background, of course, won't even show up when you run the ps uh, usx command. I believe at least I got his I got Rick Moen's, uh <laughs> Guide to viruses, correct? I got so many papers here. We're still going on this. Just checking everything there. So you can see, I, I may have to show you that. So you can see that the command slash s is going to give the result that, 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 that you want. Now I know I printed out a copy of the process table here at some point in the command I ran to do it. But I also saved a file of it, so I needn't shuffle like I am. Um, so I'll go in here. Processes. Ooh. <laughs> well then, alrighty then. I didn't save the command. Now let's see what this, this guy's talking about. Uh, of course, in the peer to peer, then you don't have the central control that you do in the others. Uh, the person in charge of this is usually referred to as the bot herper or the bot master or the controller. He owns or controls the channel, sends the commands to each of the bots, and collects the data from the botnet army. Uh, usually the motivation is power or money. Okay, I'm going to try to wait until he gets to the point where he uh, talks a little bit more about um, what, he, what this guy calls drive-by drive -by downloads, and that's what they are. Oh, this is interesting. Talk a little bit specifically about Torpig. Um, before I, before I do that, I want to just say Torpig is actually delivered uh, by another malware called Mebru. But I'm, I'm only going to tell you about those two lines right there about Mebru. 
so anyway, uh, Torpig is distributed via Mebroot. Mebroot's really a malware platform. It uh, provides you kind of like with a middleware, so you can install uh, different applications and so forth. For Torpig, it injects itself into 29 different applications. So what? Okay, sorry. Uh, it uh, injects itself into 29 different applications. These are, are, are uh, all sorts of applications like web browsers and uh, Skype and, and so forth. Uh, it steals sensitive information. Uh, it's one of, it supposedly called one of the most dangerous botnets uh, around. It, it steals, of course, passwords, HTTP posts. Okay, now what he means by drive-by downloads is, it, is what the other pres presenter was talking about. And that is, uh, you do a search, you look like you have a legitimate result, you click on it, bam, you're compromised either by a, by a result that just doesn't mean anything, or by the fact that um, you, you've been directed to a page that asks you to download a codec, or to, um, uh, or that you have a, this antivirus thing pops up and, you know, telling you you have a virus, what well, you do, <laughs> but it's trying to fish your credit card information from you voluntarily without having to, you know, <laughs> uh, dig it out of the files it sends back to the mothership. Now let's see what's going on with my scan. It's still going. Um, it's going to do the whole thing, and I don't... Okay, here we go. Now, I had a, a problem with that, let's see if it's giving me anything here I should worry about. And the problem is, is that my scan is going, <laughs> and as my scan goes, I run out of real estate as to what I'm going to look at. But they're vulnerable, and so the MedRoom folks have hacked into them and put software on them so that we can get the whole process started, which I'll tell you about in a little while. Um, I shouldn't say all of these are innocent because a large number of them are actually the porn sites, and the belief is that the porn sites are probably getting paid <laughs> to have this uh, software put on, on here. They're the innocent victim here. Other than that, we've got, we've got the drive-by download server, which initially uh, puts the MedRoot software on your system to try and see whether or not you're vulnerable. We've got the MedRoot CNC, which controls the... Okay, so he doesn't go into as much detail as the other presenter. If you put these two together, you get the full picture of what's going on. Now, let's see. How much more time do I have on this thing? Now, so far, I haven't found anything. So maybe uh, McAfee caught whatever it was. But this is going to do my whole Windows directory. Now, maybe if I get part image installed on here while we wait, um, I can show you how part image works. You can make a backup of your backup image of your directory. Now, the only reason why this wouldn't work is if, is if of course, whatever malware. Let's just say I was. Oh yeah, let me get to the Mebru thing. Um, when it says, when, he, when the speaker there talks about Mebroot and says that Mebroot overwrites your master boot record, the master boot record is the first thing that comes up when you, when you turn your machine on. Um, most people never even see the master boot record, but if you use Linux before, you'll see uh, it'll, it'll pause, perhaps, and it'll say, which operating system do you want to boot into? And that, that, that code is, comes up from the master boot record. And so... Um, your computer first, when it's turned on, there's the CMOS is to control of the computer, and all the CMOS really does is just check all your hardware and make an inventory of it and pass that information on to the operating system through the master boot record. And there's some you know programming starting to run when you get through to the master boot record. Of course, if the master boot record is poisoned before the operating system can load with special configurations and tools and parameters to alter the way the, the Windows kernel behaves, you'll never know you're compromised. And even if you have your antivirus program in there, it's not going to detect anything because the uh, basically the virus is a higher permissions level than the than the um, than the the antivirus program. It has system level where the antivirus does not. 
know, they they try to comp McAfee tries to compensate for this. All these virus programs try to compensate for this by trying to make uh, the antivirus program an unstoppable pro progress. But I've seen it stop before. So the only people that really can't stop the the, the process of, of the virus scanner is the guy sitting at the desk. But somehow the malware users are able to figure out how to get it to stop. Um, So anyway, I am just looking at this, and I'll just try to focus on something that we're... The injection server, uh, through a process which I'll detail later, gives it a particular customized phishing page for that, for that particular financial institution. And, uh, that's, this is what I was that, talking about. It looks exactly like all their other pages do. Like the one for PayPal looks like a piece of crap. Shouldn't say that since you're going to distribute this, but yes, it does. The other ones look kind of nice, like they were prepared by professional people, and I'll show you examples of that. So this is basically how things are working when Torpig is owned by the criminals. Every 20 minutes, it's connecting here, giving it any new stolen data. If the uh, central command and control has any new commands, it downloads those. Every two hours, it connects to Mevru to see whether Mevru has anything to do. Okay, so what do we do? So we're the UCSB gauchos. That's actually the... Uh, the uh, He's a professor at, at UC Santa Barbara, and he was just talking there about how um, this malware will inject a web page that looks like it's your bank, but it's not your bank, and you can't tell. <laughs> the experts can't even tell it's not their bank, and it looks legit. It even says HTTPS, and it displays the name of your bank, but meanwhile it's doing... Uh, uh, a DNS trick, and uh, it's it's telling your computer that uh, the name associated with your bank, which should be one IP number, is actually another, and it's using secure. It's using a, a an SSL layer to communicate between computers, and there you have it. You're uh, you're giving them your information, you're filling information they they don't want. Now let's see uh, the numbers here. Had 100, over 180,000 unique uh, machines connecting to us from over 1.2 million unique IPs, which we'll talk about why is that different in, in a little while too. And, and so we had all the information. Um, remember I said that there's a connection here every two hours to, to uh, Mebru, Command and Control. And we fully expected that they would download some new information that would kick us off. Now, anyway, this guy had control of the botnet for 10 days, but still, even though he had full control of it, over it, it's so well thought out and designed that he um, he really... Uh, the problem is that this, this malware doesn't have an uninstall feature, or he's worried that if he uses the uninstall feature, that everybody using a computer will get kicked off the net, and he thought, well, what happens if I disable this Tor pig and there's computers running at a hospital and people die because of it, you know, so he didn't take any action to disable it, and after the 12 days were up, the guy whoever was running the botnet had control of it again, so he only had it for 10 days, so all he could really do was collect data for it. Um, he didn't understand that if, he didn't understand the program completely to know whether it was going to cause that kind of damage. Um, now, I haven't heard much criticism of what he's done about that. There's the one argument is, you know, go ahead, do it. <laughs> go ahead, take those off, take the risk. I'm, because these things are really big. This is like, it's a, it's a very tough choice to make. And he, he ended, up, ended up being in consultation with the FBI, the, uh, the Defense Department, all sorts of things. Very high levels of... of of the country, because this is a this is a national security issue. So I've said multiple times. Maybe I'll stop here.